doesn't he? And that's a good thing. That is a good Aww. thing. Well, here with a chic way to keep track of our keys is Maria. Maria, you got to help me out a little bit. <laughs> so, Cameron, from what I understand, you and I have something very much uh, in common. Yeah, and not, not a great way. No, I lose my keys every day. Yeah. Every day. It's a running joke in my house. My cell phone and my keys, which I can ping my cell phone. I can't ping my keys. Right. So I wanted to create a really chic place to put my keys to, you know, sort of reinforce that I can keep them in the same place. And this is also a great idea too. Yes, for your everyday keys, like your keychains for when you for your car and things like that. But we have either a mail key or a key for our babysitter that are the single keys. So this will be able to be great for your everyday keys, your keychain, and your singles to keep them all in one place. It's absolutely genius. I it mean is that, pretty. And I think it looks fantastic. Yep. I'm so excited to get going on this. Okay, so we start with a couple 12 inch boards here, or just one, I guess. Well, like yeah. You've got some options. Depending on how many, you could do all these if you wanted sure, to, actually. Sure. But yeah, um, <laughs> yeah but the, the base of this is wood, as you can see here. So when, uh, when you're picking out your wood for this, like you said, this is a 12. 12 inches this is a one by three so you can get these pre-cut at the hardware store uh, but also it's gonna the type of wood that you get depends on aesthetic so you could go really inexpensive and do something like a pine yep. and you could stain it or you could do a hardwood like you can see right there that's a walnut that's absolutely beautiful or over here I have a mahogany so you could do the hardwoods and not have to stain them but there's a little bit more uh, effort into yeah. those versus the pine right pine so is pine so is gonna be softer and malleable, and malleable. yes okay. exactly all right so once we've chosen our, the type of wood that we want to use. Well, obviously, we've got to sort of space the little slots that, that we uh, that we are going to be making. So how do we get the spacing done right? So the spacing is going to be done based on a, a few different factors. One, maybe how many keys you want to put up there, and that's going to be a factor in what you want sure. your little design to be. So for instance, I love these little geometric shapes here, but on this 12-inch board, I wouldn't be able to necessarily fit five of them without them being kind of clunky and together. Right. So I would only be able to fit four of them okay. on here. So your sizing is going to depend on what you want to use so for instance I have these wood beads and you could do these and you could fit five of these on here very easily so when you're doing your spacing it's just kind of simple mathematics if you will uh, so you have your board here like I said this is um, a one by three it's a, a 12 inch one by three and I have my ruler and so what you would want to do is do a, let, a, a line down the side and what I would do is then figure out my spacing uh, you know divide by five well sure. and you would actually want like six spaces so then after I figure that out I take this and you want to make sure, oops, sorry, you want your lines to be, oh my gosh, if I can actually do that, there we go. Uh, you want your lines to be really straight, so you do this, and you want to have a line down here as well because that is where you're going to be sawing. That angle is so important because yeah. you might think it's easy to get a straight line, even even if that's at like a little over an inch or whatever it is. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, but it's tricky, it's tricky. Okay, so now that we've got them all marked, we've got to obviously cut these little grooves, and you've got a trick to make sure that they don't slide because when I first saw this, I thought to myself, man, those grooves are going to be tricky to do yes, for different yes. reasons. This is fantastic. This is great, and yep. I will tell you, don't be intimidated. I know this looks like a big thing, but don't be intimidated by this. This is a bench clamp. We have a fancy one here because we do a lot of this type of stuff on set. Exactly. But, um, or we do this at the house, of course. And so what you uh, want with this, this is just a clamp. I mean, you are saying they I was saying, other sizes, uh, you right? You would not need something so you know elaborate as this. At home, I've got a much smaller version, which would function the same way. So maybe you guys do too, but you've also got another option here too. Yeah, we have with a the hand, hand clamp. And yeah. I've done a lot of work with a hand clamp on the show just because it's a really easy to thin clamp on the yep. table. I've, I've drilled into dowels and things like that on there. It's very easy, easy to use. So you can do that. And so what I have here, uh, so on the bench clamp, I have two pieces of wood and they serve two purposes. One, to sandwich it to, together so that the, the actual clamp isn't going to leave any marks on your wood. Another is to know how far down you want to cut. Smart. So I have my just handy dandy Smart. handsaw. Oh, I thought you were saying you have and, your handy dandy. Uh, oh, know. and, and um, my, oh geez. And then my you just kind of come straight down. And straight down. And then you down. know, and as soon as you touch that wood is when you stop. Did I do it on both sides? I did. You're good. I have to tell you, so when he walked in and saw this, he's like, I get to saw, yes. So I had to let, let you saw. These things are under $10, this handsaw. Yeah. So you could ultimately do a jigsaw too as well if you have one in your garage or you have a, a friend or somebody who has a But you wouldn't really need all that. You would this, not yeah. need it. No, sure. and you could ultimately, if you were doing a pine, a uh, softer wood, you could do it by, by hand, okay. very carefully of course. But that's another option if you did not have something like this or didn't want to purchase something like this, right. you could do it. And then to make the, uh, the little areas a little bit more uh, user friendly and make them, you know, no so yep. you don't have to worry about any splinters. And uh, so it's this a is good just tip. sandpaper to make you can, it nice and clean. You can see that I um, it's a little rough where I just sawed right yeah. there. So you can just sandpaper that down, make it nice and smooth. Boom. We've got our uh, little board here, and we've got the grooves made. Now uh, comes the sort of the crafting side of things. Yay! 
like the crafty side, and I love this. So I'm going to show you how just to make them uh, extra pretty. Okay. And so I have my geometric shape here. So for this one, you have the wood bead. Yeah. All you do is just put. This is like a, a suede type of uh, rope, a roping, or I think they call it lacing as well. Yeah. You can just find these at the uh, craft supply store or the hardware store, right. and loop it through and, and knot it. So for this one in particular, what I do is this geometric shape. These were actually a, a string of lights. And I just took it off because it was um, I used it for this purpose. So then you just pop it through like that, and you're just gonna tie a knot. It'll go through like that, tie a knot, and it'll fit through, and then you're good to go. And Cameron, you just hang these, uh, hang the actual wood pieces just with like an L bracket. So if you want to hang them on the wall, um, like we have over here, you can Great. grab your L bracket like that, and it would be an easy way to conceal it, and it would be on your wall wherever you want it to be, so you don't lose your keys. Ever. You know what? I'm telling you right now. <laughs> You'll take one of these home. Good DIYs, and there's ones that are just so perfect for you. It's not even funny. It's I, necessity. I, I thought there was a reason why I was invited to, uh, to be with you on this <laughs> one. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Maria. Full instructions are available at HallmarkChannel.com. And coming up next, Debbie's making a tender fall off the bone braised mm -hmm. lamb shank that's full of flavor with some very unexpected ingredients. Come on back and find out. That's a good tea. Yeah.